So today we are about to study about control systems. Control systems for control systems for which exam? Control systems for the gate examination, right? So let us look at the importance of control systems for gate examination first, right? As far as your gate examination is concerned, you will get around eight to ten marks in your gate examination solely from this subject, right? From control systems, right? And one most important point is control systems is very, 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 very easy subject for you. So that you can say these 8 to 10 marks are in your pocket, right? You can score 100% marks in control systems section of your gate, right? So let us, uh, in this class, we will not only study for the gate examination, not only for examination. The reason is, if you study only for this examination, what happens is, the day after tomorrow or else, the next day you are going to forget, you, you will be forgetting the concepts, right? If you are targeting only the examination, then you will be forgetting the concepts. So our class will be in such a way that we will be going to see into the practical insight of the subject so that you can clearly understand it and you never need any further revision of this subject and you will never forget this subject. Our class is going to be in such a manner that you will never forget this subject, right? Control systems, can anyone define what a control system is, right? From the name itself, it is obvious that a system which can be controlled, right? So, control to what parameters? Control to what extent? Right? See, let us say we have some system. What is a system? Can anyone define system first? A system which gives desirable output from the inputs. Right? Output is controlled to get desired input. A connection of physical components. Shivani Sharma, you said connection of physical components. Connection of physical components in a proper way is nothing but a system that is not a control system that is just a system yes you, you are you are defining system okay yeah how can you define a system a system can be defined as a meaningful interconnection of si yes Gagan Sharma has given it very clearly and Rintu goes combination combination of components which will produce outputs for inputs right yes so a system is some kind of black box. You can you can say a system is a black box, right? It is a box. What kind of a box? Black box. It is a magic box, right? You are giving some input to the system and this system is giving some output, right? You are giving some input and the system is giving some output. Sometimes your system may give output without even giving your input. Even then, it is a system. Sometimes, there is a possibility that your system might give output without giving any input, right? So, for example, you have uh, oscillators, right? So, oscillators doesn't require, oscillators require a trigger, that's it, right? So, once you trigger it, it keeps on oscillating, that doesn't require any further input, right? So, sometimes you need not give any input. Your atmosphere, your environment is a system. Right? So you are not giving any input to it. It is giving you some humidity, some temperature. Right? All these things are not directly given by you, but indirectly they are taken from the environment and they were produced, they were reproduced in some other form. Right? So all these are systems. System you can define as a meaningful interconnection of components to perform a specific task. So you can call this as the definition of system, right? So this black box, whatever you have, it has this interconnection of components. This black box has some interconnection of components and it is providing you some output upon giving some input or else it even doesn't require uh, input in some cases, right? So throughout this lecture, I'll be writing important definitions. You can note them down, right? So you carry on with your running notes. You always carry on with your running notes. If there is any important point to note, right? Let us say we have some important point to note, which is very, very important for your gate exam. Then I am going to dictate that particular important point to you so that you can, you can mark it as very important. 
so you might be already knowing about system clearly right so what about a control system control system right let us say you have some air conditioned room right so this environment within a room is called as a system right you have some air conditioner in your room to control the temperature of your room whether you have gone through signals and systems or not you must be knowing one simple thing that is complex numbers basics of complex numbers right so once you know complex numbers we you should also know laplace transformations in laplace transformations you should know obtaining the laplace transform as well as inverse laplace transform of any system right running notes means the book provided by the gate academy or anything else rintu rintu ghosh see a running notes means just whatever i i write on the board or whatever i teach i i i i will dictate you some specific points right so all those points you have to take on your notes that's it that is that is what is called as running notes that's it so see here you must be knowing complex numbers you must be knowing laplace transformations so in order to obtain laplace transformations and inverse laplace transformations you should be knowing you should be having a knowledge of partial fractions right so complex numbers we'll use in later classes not in this class we'll use complex numbers in the later classes in root locus in uh, every other class whereas laplace transforms we'll use from tomorrow's class itself in fact we'll use it from today's class itself i will give you basic laplace transformations don't worry right so you must be knowing laplace transformations and partial fractions we are going through system right so what about a control system control system how will you define a control system right so it is just a combination of a controller as well as a system let us say we have this room and we want to control the temperature of this room let us say this room is very hot and i just want to control the temperature of this room what i will do is i will put uh, i will turn on ac right i will turn on my air conditioner and i will set the temperature in the air conditioner let us say i have to set some 24 degrees some 23 degrees what i will do is from the remote whichever i have right i have some remote right so in that i will set some specific temperature whether it is 24 degrees 23 degrees 25 degrees or 22 degrees whatever the temperature i want right the the air conditioner is going to control the temperature of this particular room and it is going to make me comfortable by controlling the temperature right so how will you define a control system a combination of controller and a system in order to obtain desired output right in order to obtain a desired output we are combining a controller and a system right we are combining a controller and a system right that particular combination of a system and a controller is nothing but a control system right so why we need to study about control systems right so that is what we need to know why why do we need to study about control systems why is it so necessary right so in many cases you have seen the, the modern day washing machines they are automatic washing machines right modern day refrigerators they have some intelligent controllers right so you have known about cruise missile right so what does a cruise missile do does everyone have uh, does everyone have an idea of cruise missile right what does a cruise missile do Where, uh, let us say you have an enemy flight going just before you you will just target that flight and you will leave that particular you will trigger that cruise missile what that cruise missile does is wherever that flight goes it will follow that particular flight and it will hit it right wherever that flight goes it will follow that so in certain cases you have you cannot employ humans as controllers right so let us say you have some car right so you have to drive that car to a particular location you can use a human as a controller because the speed of the car is maximum speed that a car can attain is how much some 100 miles per hour let us say right some 120 km per hour 130 km per hour right not more than this right so that you can use a human controller over there but whereas if you take uh, the example of a cruise missile you cannot use any human being right tell me can you use a, uh, tell can you do something like this you have let us say 
let us say you have some cruise missile like this. So can you place a human being on a cruise missile like this? Is it possible to control this cru cruise missile? Right? Can you place a human being on it? It is not possible, right? So what happens? Even if he is able to control, right, at that high speed, it is uh, a human being is not able to control. But even if he is able to control, let us say he is able to control. Even if he is able to control, what happens to him, right? He will go and hit the enemy flight, and along with the enemy, he is also going to die, right? Along with the enemy, he is also going to die, right? Let us say you see some terrorist organizations using suicide bombers. So, in some terrorist organizations, you will see some suicide bombers. Why do they use this, uh, those suicide bombers? Because they don't have the technology of these cruise missiles, right? So, an individual cannot have, this is, this is very expensive technology that an individual cannot have this cruise missile and he had to use some human beings he, he had to sacrifice they have they have to sacrifice some human beings in order to blast in order to make a blast or something whereas if we see if we see uh, if our indian government wants to uh, fire uh, if, if our indian government wants to uh, blast a terrorist organization does they require any human being any suicide bomber no they don't require any suicide bomber they will what they will do they will simply leave a missile on them right so you got to understand what is the necessity of control systems not only here not only just here in many cases let us say at home you have an automatic geyser which can make uh, make hot water for you right you will have some hot water geyser right so let us say you don't have any hot water geyser you have some electric heater that's it right so you have to turn off the geyser by sensing the temperature of that particular water right so what you are doing is let us say uh, so let us say you have a geyser right so this geyser this hot water geyser doesn't have a controller let us say this hot water geyser doesn't have a controller it just has an electric heating element let us say it just has some electric heating element you are giving electricity to this right so what you have to do from this there will be a tap right so you will have a tap somewhere like this right so after every movement you have to check just by opening up this tap you will have to check you will have to put your hand near this tap and you have to sense whether the, whether the temperature is high or low right so when you put your hand if the temperature is let us say some 120 degrees centigrade under pressure you can achieve 120 degrees centigrade in water also right water boils at 100 degrees centigrade but keeping it in a pressured container you can you can achieve 120 degrees centigrade also right so the pressure uh, the temperature of the water has reached 120 degrees centigrade so let uh, please tell me can you put your hand just below this can you put your hand just below this to sense the temperature of this hot water obviously no one will put hand in this right so what you will have to do is you will have to use a thermostat in this you will use what a thermostat you will use a thermostat in this so that what the thermos thermostat will do you will pre calibrate that particular thermostat you will pre calibrate that uh, thermostat to give a temperature of 60 degrees centigrade 60 degrees centigrade right now you can you can easily put hand below this and you can mix that 60 degrees water with some 25 degrees room uh, water which is at room temperature and you can use this water for bathing right so the same way what happens was let us say we had you you have seen some dhobi right so dhobi uh, even nowadays also those uh, particular uh, coal uh, coal iron machines coal irons are available right so that dhobi what he is going to do right so every time he is going to sense the temperature of that particular let us say he is he is going to iron some silk cloth he is going to sense the temperature of that particular iron box just by placing his finger on it like this right just by tapping with his finger he is going to sense what is the temperature of this 
राइट right? सो so, ऐसे करते करते क्या हुआ एक दिन भैया जी का हाथ जल गया था राइट सो वन डे वॉट हैपन टू हिस्स हैंड हिज हैंड गॉट सम बर्न इंजुरी ऑन हिज हैंड राइट सो ही हैज गॉट सम बर्न इंजुरी ऑन हिज हैंड सो बिकॉज ऑफ दैट सो ही हैड गॉट एन आइडिया वाई शुड आई सेंस दिस टेम्परेचर वाई शुड वाई शुड सम अदर कंट्रोलर वाई सम कंट्रोलर शुड नॉट राइट सो दैट डे ही जस्ट वॉन्टेड टू इन्वेंट एन आयरन बॉक्स विच इज ऑटोमेटिकली कंट्रोल्ड राइट सो ऑल दीज आर एग्जाम्पल्स ऑल दीज आर सम प्रैक्टिकल एग्जाम्पल्स विच लेड टू द डिस्कवरी ऑफ कंट्रोल सिस्टम विच लेड टू द डिस्कवरी ऑफ ऑटोमेटिक कंट्रोल सिस्टम राइट सो इफ यू आर टॉकिंग अबाउट कंट्रोल सिस्टम वॉट कंट्रोल सिस्टम आर वी इंटरेस्टेड अबाउट वी आर इंटरेस्टेड अबाउट ऑटोमेटिक कंट्रोल सिस्टम सो थ्रू आउट दिस कंट्रोल सिस्टम लेक्चर वॉट आर वी गोइंग टू डू we are going to just uh, we are going to just analyze and design control systems what control systems automatic control systems right so first thing is we are going to carry out the analysis analysis right analysis and design so you people tell me what is required in order to carry out analysis of any particular system in order to carry out analysis of a particular system what is required what do we uh, what do we need right what is required what is required in order to carry out analysis of any particular system so everyone is right up to some extent but i will tell you what exact data is required to carry out analysis of any particular system so in order to carry out analysis of any particular uh, any particular system let us say you have this laptop or else you have some ceiling fan with you right you just want to analyze right before giving it uh, before giving 220 volts let us say your fan is defective and before giving 220 volts input to that particular fan you just want to analyze whether it is going to sustain that 220 volts or it will burn out right so in order to carry out that particular analysis you require a model of that particular fan right before giving 220 volts to any particular uh, before giving that particular input to any particular system what you have to do is you have to check you have to mathematically verify whether that particular system is going to right you have to uh, mathematically analyze whether that particular system is going to tolerate that input or not right so in order to carry out this particular analysis mathematical analysis what you require is mathematical model right you require a mathematical model of your system right so there are various ways of mathematical modeling there are various ways of mathematical modeling right so the most important mathematical model the most primitive mathematical model which we are going to use here is the transfer function model is it clear i think all of you already know what is a transfer function isn't it right so what are we going to need we need a transfer function model in order to carry out the analysis of any particular system right so in this course what we will do is we will obtain mathematical models of your system after obtaining the mathematical models of the system we will obtain the uh, we, we will analyze that particular system in order to get the desired output right in order to get the desired output and uh, and in order to implement the system with in most favorable way to us right let us say we require the output to appear uh, at its output terminals in 2 seconds right so we want the speed of the system to be this much we want uh, other specifications uh, like any other specifications any other mathematical specifications all those what we want is we want the system to perform as how we uh, we are we we desire them to be performed right so in order to do that what we have uh, what we need is mathematical model so we will look into transfer function model right so one such model is transfer function model after detailed analysis of transfer function model we will move on to a modern technique of mathematical modeling called as state space model so this is primitive type of mathematical modeling whereas this is 
state space that is modern control theory is associated with state space mathematical modeling right so we will move on to state space mathematical modeling later on right so our last chapter is going to be state space model right modern control theory that is state space model so we will in detail look into the analysis and design part also right after having uh, after having specific knowledge over analysis of the systems we will move on to design also right in design we will design compensators and controllers in order to control our particular system as per the requirement right is it clear everyone is it clear so let us look at the structure of our control system subject as far as gate exam is considered right so the first chapter you are going to study is basics transfer function and signal flow graphs right so in this you will study about the basic mathematical background that is required right so how to obtain transfer functions of any particular system uh, whether it is a system have a system modeled by differential equations or else a system modeled by some electrical network or anything how to obtain the transfer function of any particular system some block diagram reduction techniques some basic block diagram reduction techniques and signal flow graphs these things we will study in the first chapter right so the first chapter you are you are going to get some one or two marks at maximum one mark to two marks at maximum right so the second chapter from the second chapter that is time domain analysis right so in time domain analysis what do we do is we will we will see the time respective behavior of your system right with respect to time how your system is going to behave right so whether its output is increasing with time whether its output is decreasing with time right all these things we will study in time domain analysis so time domain analysis can be divided into two parts that is transient response analysis steady state analysis so we are going to study these two things in time response analysis so we will study various time domain specifications also time domain specifications means rise time peak time right all these things maximum peak overshoot right so all these things we are going to study in time response analysis right so you are going to get a maximum of 2 marks marks ranging from 1 to 2 marks from time domain analysis so most of your control system study is mostly based on stability analysis right so the third part is stability analysis stability analysis in basic stability analysis what are we going to study is the first thing rauth hurwitz criteria rauth hurwitz criteria and root locus techniques right in time domain analysis you are not going to study much about stability you are not going to study various techniques to find out the stability to analyze the stability right so the stability of any system how uh, how and in what chapter are you going to study you are going to study the stability of uh, about the stability of any system in rauth hurwitz criteria and root locus technique right so these techniques are very 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 important for your gate very much important for your gate examination the reason is you are going to use this once you study rh criteria you are going to use this rh criteria in root locus techniques also and once you study this root locus as well as rh criteria you are going to use this in frequency response analysis also you are going to use this uh, use this root locus technique in order in in order to find out the gain margin and phase margin of your system also we'll see how we'll use it use this technique at all these places right so root locus techniques right so you will use this root locus techniques in design part also in your uh, lag compensators lead compensators and controllers design all these things also you are going to use this root locus techniques right so and this is also going to constitute a major portion of pa marks that is you are going to get one mark to three marks from this right is it clear you are going to get one mark to three marks from this particular chapter right after studying stability analysis the next one is the fourth chapter frequency response analysis frequency response analysis in frequency response analysis you are going to study again two parts that is bode plots bode plots as well as nyquist plots right 
Bode plots and Nyquist plots. Within Nyquist plots, you will study about polar plots also. Polar plots. Polar plots is not a separate plot. It is just part of Nyquist plots. Right? Polar plot is just part of Nyquist plots. So this is also a very important chapter. You are going to get a lot of questions from this. You can see in any paper, you will be finding question from frequency response analysis. So this is also very much important for your gate examination. Right? So you can put a 3 star to this also. Right? So you are going to get similarly 1 mark to 3 marks from this particular nearly 1 to 3 marks from this particular chapter. Frequency response analysis is same as frequency domain analysis. Of course, frequency response analysis is same as frequency domain analysis. So, the next chapter you are going to study is the fifth chapter. See, all these chapters, basics, time domain analysis, stability analysis, frequency response analysis, everything is just analysis only. There is no design part yet. Till now, there is no design part, right? So, where you will get design part is in the next chapter, that is, right, industrial controllers and compensators. And you know, our gate board is very uh, intelligent and they already know how intelligent you people are in design part, right? So, they are not going to give much marks from this. They are going to give only one mark. At most, at most, sometimes very... Uh, very less frequently, you are going to get some 2 marks from this. So, 1 mark to 2 marks, right? But still, we will study this also in very extensive way, right? So, you doesn't need to put a lot of efforts in solving the problems. We will study this in very extensive way that this also becomes very simplified to you, right? So, we will study industrial controllers and compensators also in a very easy manner. Right? In very easiest way, in very comprehensive way, you can easily solve the questions from this particular chapter also. Is it clear? Right? So, the next chapter that is left is the sixth chapter that is modern control theory. Modern control theory. Right? In modern control theory, you will study about state space analysis which we have mentioned there. Right? So, this chapter is also very important as far as the number of marks is concerned, right? Because every year you are going to see at least two marks from this particular chapter, right? Every year, every year you will get a question from this chapter, right? So the advantage of studying control systems is the, you will just, they will just follow this particular weightage. They will always follow this particular weightage and they will always give equal importance to almost all the chapters. Right? So, in order to study these later chapters, you must be very good at basics and signal flow graphs. Right? So, these things you will be using throughout, even though they are not giving you much marks, but you should study this. If at all, control systems is a very small subject as far as your gate exam is concerned. Right? So, if you, if you study control systems, if you pay attention in the class, that's it. So, you need not specially revise anything. You just have to revise during your classes only. So, before coming to the next class, you have to revise today's class. Right? Before coming to the day after tomorrow's class, you have to revise tomorrow's class. That's it. You prepare good notes from the class and with, from within the class only whatever we have discussed, you just revise them and you just come to the class. That's it. That is completely sufficient. You can say 8 to 10 marks are in your pocket. Right? So, 8 to 10 marks are gone nowhere, 8 marks to 10 marks are in your, so that is the importance of this particular subject, right? So, as far as questions practice is concerned, how we are going to study this particular subject is, so I will be dealing with the questions whatever necessary, I will be dealing with the previous gate questions as well as some, uh, uh, some questions other than gate also, which are necessary to explain concepts, right? So, apart from discussing, I will give you some few assignments, right? So, within uh, for one class, I will give some two to three problems as a homework, so that if you practice those problems and you come the next day, so it will be a sufficient practice for you, 
six marks for control systems. This is fixed. This is gone nowhere. And some four marks for process control. Four to six marks you will get from process control. So if you are good at this six marks, if you are good at this particular six marks, right? If you cover this six marks. This knowledge of control systems is also be also going to be used in your process control very widely, right? So the controllers and compensators which you are going to study here, they are going to be used extensively in your process control part, right? So as per our structure, we will start with the basics of our control system subject, right? So till now we are we are just speaking about the fundamentals. That's it, right? So mathematical modeling. So mathematical modeling. What do you mean by mathematical modeling, right? So we are putting the uh, putting the model of this particular system, whatever you have, the ceiling fan, your AC, or whatever, your computer, your PC, or anything. We are putting that particular model on a paper in mathematical equations, right? So generally, generally, what do we have? We have systems whose <coughs> we have systems whose output is governed by differential equations, right? Output is always governed by their differential equations. Let us say Newton's law of cooling, right? Newton's law of cooling is a differential equation, right? So that is also a basic law, right? Your RC circuit, RC circuit's nature is also governed by a differential equation. Right. So all these differential equation, it is always difficult to solve differential equations. Right. So we have seen an advantage of converting a time domain differential equation based mathematical model into a frequency domain model. Right. So what is the advantage of Laplace transformations? Laplace transformations will convert differential equations into what what form? Can anyone tell me? Laplace transformations can convert differential equations into what form? What equations? Not frequency. Frequency. Yes, into frequency domain, right? But differential equations are converted into algebraic equations. See, it might be multiple variable also. Yes, quadratic. Quadratic equation is an algebraic equation, sir. Right? So, frequency. Sorry, time domain. Time. Domain differential equations. These are converted into what? These are converted into algebraic equations. Algebraic equations. Time domain differential equations are converted into algebraic equations. That is the advantage of using Laplace domain models, right? So these time domain differential equation models are the basis for analysis of any particular system. Right. So this basic idea of mathematical modeling is given by whom? This basic idea of mathematical model is given by your James Maxwell. Everyone know James Maxwell, right? James Maxwell. He has given the basic laws, basic laws of electromagnetism, right? So you know James Maxwell, right? He has given given four Maxwell's equations. Four Maxwell's equations. The same person, the same person has led the basic foundation for this control system subject, right? So the subject which you have, the mathematical modeling techniques, what we study here. So the basic foundation was laid by whom? James Maxwell. He started modeling systems with mathematical equations, right? So he obtained the mathematical model of the flyball governor controller. Right. In order to obtain the stability of that particular system, he had obtained the mathematical model of flyball governor. Flyball governor. Did you ever uh, heard of this name? Have you ever heard this name, flyball governor? What is a flyball governor? Can anyone answer? No. Right. So see here. Nowadays. You have diesel engines, petrol engines, right? So electric motors, everything in order to obtain rotational speed. Nowadays you have all these facilities, right? So previously people don't used to have these engines. They used to have steam engines. What kind of engines? 
steam engines. So steam engines or steam turbines, yes, it is used in power system, right? So these are steam engines or steam turbines. Steam turbines, right? So those who have studied power systems, they have this idea. What happens while using these steam turbines is, right? So if at all the load applied by your generator is being reduced, so the steam turbine speed keeps on increasing, right? So if the speed of this turbine keeps on increasing, let us say with respect to time, right? This is speed. Speed of the turbine keeps on increasing like this. Keeps on increasing like this, right? The speed is going to increase to a dangerously high value. So because of this, what happens is your system is going to damage, right? Your system at high speeds, if anything rotates at very high speeds, what happens to the system? The system is going to become unstable and it is going to damage, right? So in order to avoid the damage of steam turbines and steam engines, so our James Maxwell has modeled the flyball governor. Flyball governor was already used, but people don't know how to control it within the limits, right? So people already uh, already are using it, but they don't know, right? Flyball governor is nothing but see here. You have some spring type of arrangement like this, right? So you will have two weight suspensions like this, right? Two weights suspended like this. Because of your steam turbine, there will be some gear arrangement to rotate this particular arrangement. So this will rotate this particular arrangement with some angular speed omega, let us say, right? So as soon as it rotates, if the speed increases, if the speed increases, what happens is because of centrifugal force, this will go down, right? So because of increase in speed, this will go down, right? So if, if this goes down, if, if this, this, this increases its radius, let us say this is increasing its radius till here. Right, so we will have, we will have its height to be decreased. It, its height will be decreased. If its height decrease, height decreases, so there will be a nozzle which will open and close. Right, so this that nozzle will be controlled because of this flyball governor. Right, if the nozzle closes, if the if the nozzle closes, the steam input to the generator will be reduced. If the steam input reduces the speed automatically reduces, right? So that is nothing but a flyball governor. Our James Maxwell has modeled, mathematically modeled this flyball governor. But the difficulty that, that we have uh, faced in a flyball governor is we don't have, uh, we don't have the differential equations converted into algebraic equations. So if the differential equations are converted into algebraic equations, then it becomes very easy for analysis. It becomes very easy for mathematical calculations, right? So we have used uh, the Laplace transformation model, right? The transfer function model, which employs the ratio of Laplace transformation of output and Laplace transformation of input. So let us look into the transfer function modeling of your control system. Whatever the control system you have, let us look into the transfer function modeling of it.